And so very happy to be here. I want to acknowledge, of course, the owner of Zendo Coffee, Pilar. Where are you? Is she here? So, okay, at the counter, working. No, it's okay. I mean, let, she, she's got a business to run. Um, so anyway, well, let's give Zendo a round of applause. <laughs> So we have lots of folks in the community here and some people from the city. And today we wanted to talk about the next step in our Buy Local program. And this is a program actually that we first begin to analyze back when we were in the state auditor's office. And we actually tried to measure how much money was going out of state for different governments. And the amazing thing is, and as folks know even from the campaign trail, this is one reason why I ran for this office, Mayors can actually have a huge say in fixing this problem. And as the largest city in Albuquerque, uh, we have the largest responsibility and opportunity to try and shift every dollar that we can to a local vendor. And we're beginning that here today. So uh, we are actually requiring every city department to go through all of their contracts, and there are literally thousands of contracts, and pick out which ones can be swapped out for a local company, or at least where there's a local company that can provide that service. And then we'll go through the appropriate bid process or small contracts process to get it done. But the first step is saying like literally what contracts are going out of state that could go local. Now, a lot of folks ask me, well, how many are there? And how big is that? And what are those contracts? And I just wanted to let you know that uh, that process is very methodical because there is no sort of one size answer. You actually have to go literally contract by contract through thousands of contracts to understand, can it be canceled? When is it up? What are the provisions? How big is the order? And then you have to cross-reference that with what are the companies available in Albuquerque? So that kind of process is going to take years, but we're starting. And we are starting with our own copy purveyor. So, uh, and Pilar is now here. We just clapped for you. <laughs> Round of applause for Pilar, owner of Zendo. Um, so we are switching literally the coffee we drink on the 11th floor to Zendo. And so that's what we're here to celebrate this morning. It's a small step, but it's a big symbolic step. And I'm going to give you one other example that we're working on just to highlight both the, the difficulties and the absurdity of how bad this is in some areas. The business cards that I gleefully hand out to our community are printed out of state. So this is something, right, we know we can do business cards here. But how do we unwind that? It's a long-term contract. It's one of these on-call providers. There's all sorts of details. But the point is, this is another good example of the kind of things we can do locally and we will do locally. But it's actually a lot harder to pull off than you think. And that's why we're mapping out literally over the course of years, we're going to be doing this every single time we find a contract, we're going to try and swap it out for a local vendor. And so hopefully by the end of this, we're going to be able to point to dozens, if not hundreds, of examples. But it is going to be a slow and methodical process that we'll keep you updated on, uh, hopefully monthly. Now, the last thing I wanted to share, too, is I even found a good example. We got an email into our just general Facebook or, uh, uh, website. And it was uh, uh, an individual who runs like a stamp company. And the irony of how bad this is right now is that they explained that they actually get orders for the city of Albuquerque for different types of stamps, like the ones that say veto or <laughs> approved. Um, and uh, these stamps are made locally, but they're purchased by a California vendor. So like the city pays a California vendor who then buys them locally. And of course, they take a huge share. So in each one of these examples, right, these are literally our tax dollars, because these are government contracts that flow out of state or out of town. And so for every dollar we can actually prevent from doing that, it's another dollar in the, in the Albuquerque economy and, of course, for that individual who lives right here and works in Albuquerque. So this is very important, and it's something where we're going to lead by example. It's going to be a long and steady road, but it is going, hopefully, to create hundreds of jobs over the next few years. Now, to tell us more about that, I'm going to hand it over to our CAO, Sarita Nair. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I just kind of want to start at the same place the mayor did because we've done that. We've been on this sort of road show talking about procurement for three years now. Back when he was the auditor and I was the chief government accountability officer. And what we did in our very first year at the auditor's office is that we required every state and local government agency to disclose to us 
exactly how much money they were spending in state and how much they were spending out of state. And the first year we got that data, we were all excited and it was terrible data. And that's how we learned that nobody was actually paying attention to this anywhere in the state. Uh, really, there was just a lack of awareness. And so with the required schedule though, in the second year, what we saw is that people started paying a lot of attention to it because it showed up in the back of their audits. And the data we got was better in terms of quality, but the story that it told was pretty sad. So statewide, we found that 32% of the statewide spending was going out of state, which sounds pretty good. But most of that was due to the construction industry and insurance. So we all buy our insurance from Press or Loveless, and those all are, are located in state. And then because of regulation and licensing, pretty much all construction happens through in-state contractors. When we took a little deeper dive into specific sectors, though, it was a very different story. 83% of IT dollars statewide were going out of state. 78% of food and food service dollars were going out of state. And here in the city, what we've learned is that out of 200 to 300 million dollars of annual spending, about 70 to 80 percent, depending on the year, is going to out-of-state companies. So we started with this premise that government is one of the spenders who, ha who spends so much money that we can actually create a stimulus plan within the economy without spending a dollar just by moving these purchases from out-of-state to in-state. And that's what, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and so we are so excited to be in a place where instead of just talking about it and shaming people for not doing it, we can actually do it ourselves. And so our, our effort is on both sides. On our side, on the city side, um, we had to raise awareness, just like we had to do statewide with the audits. And we have some folks who've been working on this data through the City Alive initiative for a number of years. We have really good facts and figures, but as the mayor explained, it's not something where you can pull a report and say this is the number of dollars that went out of state this month. It really is meticulous and, and kind of painstaking. Um, but we have that level of awareness and I'm a big believer in that. I kind of compare it to a food journal where once you have to write down what you're eating every day, you're less likely to have you know, that piece of cake because you don't want to have to write it down. <laughs> and by making people write down every time they spend money out of state, we feel like that itself can change behavior. Um, but then we also are requiring, through an administrative instruction, we're requiring all our departments to look out of state for, uh, I mean, to look in state for a bidder. And if they don't provide a, an in state bid for a contract, then they have to give a justification of why they couldn't do that. And I think just that little extra step, even though it is, it is a little extra of labor for, for our folks who are working in purchasing, it's going to change those, those demographics pretty dramatically because once you're looking, you're going to find that there are all kinds of qualified vendors for things like business cards, for things like coffee uh, right here in the state. And then on the vendor side, what we're trying to do is reduce that red tape. So one of the examples of that is the small purchase limit. The small purchase, just for simplicity's sake, it's like the least amount of paperwork that you have to do to buy something in the state. And the limit on that used to be $2,000, which is you know, why things like the Zento contract were kind of limited in how big we could go with it because if we go over $2,000, you got into a more paperwork intensive type of purchasing. We raised that limit to $10,000 so that we can actually enter into a little bit bigger contracts in a little more easy fa fashion so that people don't get hung up on that paperwork. And then we're also providing more navigation. So you, you'll see that we have um, folks who serve as navigators through contract through our office and also um, directly from our economic development department that can actually help you figure out how to become a vendor, how to sign up so that you get RFPs from the city. And we've also put those resources in every library and every community center together with bilingual instructions. And a community center and library staff is all trained so that they can all sit down with any vendor who walks in and help them sign up to be a city vendor and help them figure out when an RFP is coming out. And last, we have something on our website. It's a little strange to find, but if you go to a, a tab that says what we do, and then you pop down at the bottom, there's something that says what we buy. And that lists every single thing that the city buys. And so if you can filter it and sort it in different ways. But if you, if you know that you are selling stamps, then you can pull up exactly the dollar figure of the contracts that we have to buy those stamps. And then you can initiate that process to become a vendor, to receive RFPs, and then you'll be in the mix next time we need to buy that good or service. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, our next speaker. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go ahead and take questions um, from the media, and then we'll have any kind of um, interaction or questions we have from community or business folks for either Lieutenant 
Del Greco or the mayor or Sarita, they will stick around and do that, but we'll take questions from the media first. Okay, and then let me just wrap up with this. So what we're really doing is a lot of people, and I see this all over the country, but you know, it's like, oh, buy local. You know, this is a topic that gets a ton of lip service. And so we are trying to do, actually deliver on that, which is a very hard thing, but it's a very meaningful thing. And that's why it's really important, those changes that Sarita talked about, and also the access in the libraries, and the way this is now part of the job description of our department directors, that's how we actually do it. And that is so different than the standard standing up here and saying we should all buy local, because we're actually gonna do it. And uh, luckily, we've been essentially training and preparing for this for several years, even going back to the auditor's office. So I think we're actually gonna be able to get this done. Okay, all right, so um, questions? Yes? So can I ask a question by giving a specific uh, scenario? Yeah. So I own an office equipment dealership, and uh, we just met with procurement, which referred us to this meeting today. <coughs> So I think, and we've, we come across this a lot, especially with franchises and things like this. And so um, the technical answer to your question, though, we might have to get back to you on. Mm -hmm. Do you know that one? I'm not sure. Yeah. But there's, there's sort of three different paths. Usually, sorry. Um, Zendo is really based on this idea of, of promoting community. And um, every time somebody comes into my shop and buys a cup of coffee, it allows me to put shoes on my children's feet. and allows me to pay my rent and allows me to buy groceries. And, and that multiplier is extended to all of my employees. And I think it's really cool to, to have you guys be a part of this sense of community that we're trying to build and that you're also helping that, right? You're helping our employees be able to live and work and be a part of Albuquerque. And, and I think that that, from my perspective, is the best part of all of this, is having somebody in a place of such power uh, <laughs> support something like this instead of going with Starbucks or somebody out of state. Um, it really does affect these very small groups of, of people that really need this, the support. So thank you. thank you for choosing us and for letting I us be a part that. of it. Thanks. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> so uh, thank you for sharing that. I also just want to add another example, this notion of like the premium on community building. Another one is geography. So, you know, I think it makes sense for our city to give uh, Target some contracts to areas of town where businesses are starting that uh, can help bring the community together. And so actually this is another example of Zendo, part of, you know, transforming this area of downtown, which was desperately needed and giving people a place to come together. And so that's, I think, worth much more than a 5% price premium, so, yeah.